Yo, what's up guys? Mike Hill, the Wholesaling Titan here. And in today's video, I'm bringing you into another one of our weekly group coaching calls. Now, this is an excerpt from a call where we talk about what it really takes to be a successful wholesaler. Specifically, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I plan out my month, my weeks, and my days to accomplish the tasks that are going to guarantee that deals get done. And look, this is coming from someone who has struggled with everything from attention span to productivity. Um, like I've never been tested and I don't like labels or excuses, uh, but I could clearly see myself being classified as like ADD or ADHD, meaning like this shit does not come easily to me naturally. Uh, I've probably bought a hundred dif different types of planners, uh, agendas, I've read books, I've bought courses, um, I've used different types of apps, different websites, different productivity planners with relatively little success. And this methodology, as well as the physical book that I use, which may surprise you, uh, is really the only thing that has produced massive results for me. So I encourage you to emulate this. Uh, there's a template that you can steal and use for yourself. Uh, and before we dive into the clip, uh, I wanna extend a free invite for you to join us on our next weekly call, all right? This is a small, intimate, non-judgmental space. Uh, be as vocal as you like. Uh, yes, I have lessons that I teach, but I encourage maximum participation. Uh, it's just you will get better by asking more questions, and I will answer all of your questions. Uh, this is a community of support where we work together to accomplish goals. Uh, your free invite is in the description below, as well as my wholesaling course, which you can now get for free. And um, just come with your questions, man, all right? I've got over a decade of experience doing this. I started this business with no money. I have worked with students from just about every background, including guys who were literally homeless. And man, I just love seeing people like not having to answer to a boss, you know, spending more time with their kids, with their family, with their friends, enjoying their passions. And like really knowing that I maybe have a little part in that, right? That's uh, that's an awesome thing. Um, now look, this particular call is geared towards largely towards beginners, but I think anybody could benefit from it. Even if you have some experience, you have some deals under your belt. I know that this will make you at least ten times more productive, if not significantly more. Uh, one last quick note before we dive into the call. Uh, just so you know, these calls they have a large range. Okay, some weeks we'll get really deep on like technical things um you know we'll go through contract clauses or specific campaigns we'll look at deals that have closed we'll look at deals in the works uh we'll look at specific obstacles and challenges uh some weeks we'll do some role play some weeks we'll go over software and sometimes these calls will be a little bit more lifestyle more personal development oriented so whatever it is that you need man i got you covered um, on that note, please leave me any questions, any comments, join our next uh, weekly Zoom call for free, smash the like and subscribe button for me, I appreciate it more than you know. And now let's go ahead and jump into today's clip. Well, let's start off a little bit general, right? I wanna talk about the business. Business, this wholesaling thing, it's kinda hard, right? It's a little bit hard, that's what I hear quite a bit. And the first thing is, you guys maybe heard me say this before, but that's all relative. Listen, if you're starting a new workout program, your first day in the gym, it's hard. It's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be challenging. You've never worked out before. You never played basketball. Even if you watch some games, you're not going to step on the court and just start draining threes. So let's manage that expectation. You know, it is a little bit difficult. But that being said, if you feel like this is hard, if you feel like it's tiring, if you feel like it's boring, the reason you feel that way is because you probably haven't had results yet. Or if you've had a deal or two, you haven't had consistent results yet, enough to call this a career or something you're doing, uh, you know, more or less on the regular. But I promise you, okay, when this starts getting consistent, when you, you know, when you make 500 calls and you don't see any results, it's easy to get fatigued. But I promise you, when you make a thousand calls and you make twenty thousand dollars, then the next time someone says to you or I say to you, "Hey, make another thousand calls, make two thousand calls," it's gonna be easy. You're gonna be excited to do. It. It's gonna be kind of like a game, and that's how I like to approach this business. Think of it almost like a game. Like, listen, I'm a gamer, okay? I like my PlayStation, and I play it when I get a chance. But 
the rewards that so many people get addicted to, the dopamine, you unlock the level, you unlock the new gun. What is that really doing for you? What is that doing for your life? Absolutely nothing. Okay, so when you do the semi-boring work, um, there is a real payoff. And it's only once you get that payoff, right? Even if it's just your first payday, your first deal. I mean, this stuff becomes easy. You get enthusiastic. You have unlimited energy. You're ready to go. And um, the, yeah, I guess the biggest thing is that you just have unlimited energy. You're ready to attack this on a daily basis. Um, so with that said, you want to be very much process oriented. You guys need to stop thinking about uh, especially in the early stages, when am I gonna deal? Gonna get a deal? When is this going to happen? In some cases, uh, personal belief. I think that's a lot of uh, not quite karma, but it's like an energetic uh, kind of wall that you're putting up, right? That you're kind of blocking this from you. But also, your focus is in the wrong place. So, especially if you're new, and I'm talking to a lot of my beginners here, you have to temporarily detach yourself from those results and just focus on the process. And you should know your process by going through um, the materials, the audits and wholesaling with Mike University and looking at those KPIs, those metrics is actually a cheat sheet that says, here is what it takes to get a deal. And then there's multiple scenarios. If you have no money, you're just cold calling. If you're doing direct mail, if you're doing this X, Y, Z, what it's going to take. And once you have those metrics in mind, it's a lot easier to get to them. Um, you know, I've talked to people who have made 700 calls and they're like, man, this is not working. And I'm telling them, I'm like, you're more than halfway there. You just need to make about, I don't know, 300 more calls or, you know, maybe it's um, 800 more calls. But once you make it and look at the payoff, right? You know, a lot of you guys are working, as the average student comes to me is usually making between 40 and 80K a year. So if you are, you know, dedicating two weeks to this with no results, but at the end of those two weeks, if you're consistent, right, you're making those calls every day and you make a, a deal and you net $20,000 and you break it down by what is my time worth? What did I put into this? You'll find that it's absolutely 100% worth it. Uh, I would like to point out today that um, I did switch from kind of my planned curriculum so I was talking with a student earlier today and I found that this is actually what I'm about to talk about is a very, very common issue. And so I'm going to encourage you guys again, a lot of times when you give me feedback and tell me what it is that you're maybe struggling with is where I can adjust the curriculum to speak directly to your needs. So again, I'm going to really um, encourage you to do that. Uh, also, as you guys probably know, I do specialize in working with beginners. And on this topic of this being initially very hard, you know, if we go back to our gym example, first day is hard. But if you are consistent and you work out, you know, three days a week, five days a week for six months, that same workout that you used to call hard is easy. It's enjoyable. You've exceeded it. You've gotten stronger and it's actually nothing to you. And that same analogy, it, it holds true here. But I will say that you know, in working with beginners, it is typically harder. And that's because the first deal is usually the most difficult. And that's because, you know, a lot of you guys are coming in with very limited budgets. You're coming in with limited time. You may be still working that nine to five. And it's much, much easier. I, I promise you, this process will get easier. And it's much easier when I have worked with uh, students who have done deals before to get them to scale up. It's significantly easier than starting with someone who's never done a deal. And part of that might be mindset and belief systems and a little bit of doubt and also your resources, financial resources. Um, but I've had people come to me and send me 10 grand just for coaching. And they'll say, hey, you know, here's 10 grand. They pay all at once for coaching. I mean, listen, I don't, I don't mind. That's great for me, right? Um, but they're very coachable and it's usually pretty easy for them to do that. But one, I kind of like this lane, this niche, because... Uh, as much as I do enjoy that, uh, you know, when those big kind of bigger checks come in in terms of our uh, mentoring and coaching, um, I, I guess I don't really forget where I came from and the struggles that I had and how that impacted me and the difference that it's made in my life. And, you know, talking to you guys, I think the best, best testimonial you could possibly give me is Mike, I put in my two weeks. Like, that's a big part of what I'm here for, right? Is to see you guys actually have that freedom.
right? To have not just financial freedom, but to spend more time with your kids, to spend more time with your wife or your spouse, or just kind of doing the things you love. And this is just a a, a subtle reminder to just really keep that in mind. Like you're not making calls or doing the hard work just to do that shit or just to get a check that you could post on Facebook or whatever. Like there is a bigger picture here. And sometimes, especially beginners, we talk about that first deal. Um, but, but it's just so much bigger than that. And then again, once you get that first deal, there are a lot of struggles, especially if you're on a maybe limited budget or, you know, I don't have earnest money deposit. I don't have proof of funds and things like that. But understand that the progression here is not linear. It's not like you work really hard and then you make a thousand dollars and the next week you make 2000, next week you make 3000. It doesn't work like that. You kind of stay stuck in the mud and everything sucks for a really long time. And then you, boom, you hit that first deal, you make 20 grand, and then you don't have to use those same tactics and deal with a lot of those same barriers to entry that you dealt with the first time. Now, if someone says, hey, I need $1,000 earnings money deposit, say, boom, easy, here it is. And they say, well, we have a competing offer with 1,000. You say, okay, I put up 5,000, not a big deal. Um, I can deploy some money and we talk, I was talking to a student earlier this week about some of the different stages. So yeah, it's a little bit hard now, but um, there are different thresholds that you hit. So once you get, and I'm talking kind of minimums here, but you know, you hit that maybe $500 mark. The first thing I'm going to do is put you onto a VA. You buy your time back. Now you have double the output going out. And that's going to be very helpful for you. You can get additional resources. You know, you get into the thousand dollars a month to spend. Um, you know, then you play in some Facebook ads, you have $2,000 a month to spend. And again, it's not $2,000 one time because the majority of your deals come by way of follow-up. But when you can spend that consistently for sure, for let's say six months, then you dabble in some other things, some direct mail. And I'm here to guide you through that. And obviously some of the course material is there to guide you through that as well. So my promise is stick with this and it gets easier. Now, on that note, we've been talking a lot about consistency in recent days, which is very, very important. Like one of the most important things, obviously, uh, you know, if you work out, you know, if you have one guy who works out 100% of his effort, but he goes to the gym once a month, even once a week, he's not going to see that progression. He's just not going to get results. If you have another guy, you know, he's working out at 60%, right? Maybe he goes in the morning, he's a little bit tired, a little bit fatigued, but he does that you know, three to five times a week, even if the effort's not fully there, which I'm not necessarily encouraging, but stick with me for the sake of the analogy, um, he's going to get those results. Like he's going to start seeing results much faster than the inconsistent person. So I want you guys to, um, to really keep that in mind. Now, even though we talk about consistency and we kind of build up to that, and again, like lifting weights, it gets a lot easier. There are seasons in life. So I encourage you, that's why one of our, um, in the budget exercise that you guys do, I encourage you to be as frugal as possible. You want to go through your credit card statements, your bank statements, and find out where you're wasting money. Am I eating out twice a week? Am I Uber Eats? Uh, do I have you know Netflix and HBO Max and PlayStation Plus and all this other shit that you want to cut off? And that's not because you want to live this frugal life where you're trying to pinch every penny. That's because um, for a season... You want to be as cheap as possible. You want to be a Scrooge so you can use those funds to put into your business and then it will grow, right? And then you can replicate those profits and then you can start living that, you know, for your lifestyle. So I want to really try to convince you guys and get you to this point where for this season, I'm speaking specifically to my beginners, you got to work your ass off, man. Like make it it should feel kind of difficult, right? That, that's a natural feeling when people complain to me like, Mike, this is hard. I'm like, yeah, it's supposed to be. And you should be um, almost grateful that it is because if, it's, if this was that easy, you know, I know a lot of people online make it sound a little bit easier than maybe you found it in your personal experience. But if it was that easy, everybody would do it and then it would fail to be profitable. So for this season, for now, I don't want you working 12 hour days forever. No one gets into the business to do that shit. But in the beginning, right, be willing. Maybe you work some 12 hour days. You can do this. You are capable. And we talk about tactics in the program. And I'll probably revisit some of this where um, 
you know, I talk about how to do that, right? So your environment, for example, is a big one. Who you're around, how you structure your day, where your workspace is, how many distractions you have. I mean, are you working right next to your PlayStation? Are you working in your bed, you know, typing and stuff like that? Like uh, those things will all affect you. Do you work, you know, do you hang around with people who are, you know, not, uh, I don't know, positive influences, right? Smoking weed all the time or something like that. Um, these are things that you have to kind of keep in mind, but initially make this the season where you go above and beyond, right? If you work a 12 hour day for the sake of yourself, for your kids, for your wife, for your future generations to come to build up some generational wealth that you can pass down, it's going to be worth it to sacrifice three months, six months for, you know, the ultimate lifestyle that you want at the end of the day. So, <clears throat> How do we kind of get these results? And one thing I've found is that I've worked with students who it's taken them six months or, or more in some cases, really, to do their first deal. But when we sit down and we talk, maybe we have um, you know one of our one-on-one -on -one calls, what I've found and what they have expressed to me is that like usually the first maybe five months, they spend just like trying to get on track. Like they more or less self-admittedly even been kind of bullshitting. They've been inconsistent. They've been dabbling. They've been looking at other things. They've been wasting time. They've been watching Netflix. They've had bad habits that they needed to break. So it's not so much that it really took them six months to do a deal. It's that five months was trying to get those correct habits and disciplines in place. And then ultimately then that next month like they finally got on it and then that's when the deal comes in and then again they reinvest the money and now the deals start coming a little bit more regularly and i think if you talk to any experienced wholesaler myself included they will probably tell you the same thing like listen it took me you know six months took me eight months to do my first deal but if i had to do it all over again you know with the knowledge i have and now the discipline that i've cultivated if i had to do it all over again I could probably do it in 30 to 60 days, okay? So on that note, how do we do this? We're going to talk a little bit about productivity and a little bit of planning, and I want to share with you, I'll get a little bit personal with you guys today on kind of how I do this and how I've come to do this, and I want you guys to take this and really kind of make it your own. All right, so we start off in the program. If you guys remember, you should have been through this exercise already, but you have the reverse schedule exercise. And that is something that worked phenomenally for me, but it's also based on scientific, like I think um, the first time I kind of heard about this, and these are not original ideas of mine, right? If I'm being fair, um, the one I kind of based this off, the main book uh, was The Power of Full Engagement. Jim Lauer, I think, and then, uh, a co-author as well. Um, but they did, you know, their scientific studies from everything from tracking people in their life for like 30 years to, you know, hooking up the brain with the electrodes and all that stuff. And that's how they came up with this idea of the uh, reverse schedule. But it also, there's a lot of benefits to it. Uh, please go back and revisit that module. Uh, if you just need a refresher or maybe you skipped it, which you shouldn't have. But um, the reason we do that is to get a realistic picture. If you start with a plan that's unrealistic, when I talk to people, when I do my, like the free coaching calls I do, the average person, eight, nine times out of 10, I say, how much time can you commit to this business? They say, whatever it takes. And like, look, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but that's not realistic. That doesn't really happen. I want something that you can be held accountable for. So when you do your reverse schedule, if you guys remember, you're going to put in your uh, responsibilities. If you work a nine to five, you're going to put that in, but you also put in your play time. So you're going to put in date nights. You're going to put in time at the gym. You're going to put on your schedule, you know, um, I think I said date nights already, but uh, whatever it is, right? E everything that you uh, not just are committed to in terms of business, but or your career or whatever, but also your play time. And what we're trying to do there is to identify white space, identify times that are untouchable. And this goes back to Parkinson's law, which basically says the amount of time that you give to a certain task, it will fill that time. And the example I always give is, you know, when I was in college, we'd have a month three months to write a paper and i just wouldn't write the paper until like a night before and then the night before you you crank out like a 30 page paper now is, is it your best work no but uh, that's kind of human nature that's why the day before a vacation 
when you're leaving for a week, you got to get a lot of shit done. You tend to be a lot more uh, productive than you would be normally. And so that's the idea behind that exercise. Okay. So I hope you guys do that and you kind of stick to it. Now, kind of the problem with that, not necessarily a problem, but something that's very, very common is that once you do that exercise and you're like, okay, I'm moving on to the next module. You guys start to get to work and it's not front and center anymore. So you kind of maybe forget about it. And so there's a way that I'm going to show you right now as to how you plan your day and how I, I plan my day. And I'm going to encourage you guys to, um, uh, to, to really emulate this, right? I find it very helpful. And I've tried just about every planning planner, planning mechanism on earth. Like at this point in my life, I do consider myself very organized and very disciplined, but I want you guys to understand like that shit did not come naturally to me at all. I've probably bought 50 planners that I never used before I started using them. I tried using online stuff. I've tried simple express, uh, Excel spreadsheets. I've tried all the different, um, programs. Some of my use to this day, but you guys have seen me talk about Nosby, um, Asana, don't forget the milk Trello. I've been through them all. Okay. Um, this, and again, I still do use like some, uh, uh, what do you call these things apps, but this is the thing that has really, um, been the most beneficial for me. This is how I plan my, my months, my weeks, my days. It holds me accountable. It keeps my goals front and center. And this is a daily practice. So what I've done, um, again, based on a, a conversation with students week is I put together a PDF for you guys that I would love for you guys to take and to use and to uh, kind of make it your own. Now, uh, before I pull this up, let me bring up my screen here. Um, again, I, I told you guys I've tried just about every planner in the world. This was a really cool one that I have here. Let's see if I can grab this. All right, it's called the, uh, so you guys see it, the 100 Day Gold Journal. And um, in doing my process, I did kind of borrow some things from this book but you'll see that every day uh let's see if i can see this here oh that's the evening sorry i'm trying to look while i do this but anyway uh it kind of plans your day and you you set a, a goal for 100 days you start off with a little gratitude you say hey you know in 68 days i'm gonna accomplish this these are my micro goals my action plan and you have you know all your boxes and things you struggle with and whatever so it's actually a really cool concept but you may notice this this page is blank and so, uh, as disciplined as I consider myself, and I did buy this a couple years ago, but I got to, I'm being real with you guys here. I got to day 15 of a hundred. Okay. <laughs> That's how far I got. And I think a big part of that is because when everything is so stiff, I guess, when you skip a day, you know, cause you get to like a 10 day review and if you only need three days and then the prompts are not always applicable, or maybe I, I ran out of time and. I, I just, I just didn't really stick with it. Okay. So, um, what I've developed is, uh, again, I've borrowed some concepts from this book and some other planners that I've used. So I'm not some super genius, man. That's what I think smart people borrow from other people. Um, so this is what I put together for you guys. So let me go ahead and pull up my screen here. And hopefully you guys can uh, see my screen and I think I got this pulled up here. Ooh, oops, that's not supposed to be there. Okay. Um, by the way, if you guys uh, are looking for some new music, hey, let me, let me just do a plug real quick. Uh, this guy, Forrest Frank, I found him not too long ago. Um, man, really talented artist. If you guys are looking for some good, clean music, he's a Christian artist, but it's not that like church hymn stuff. I mean, if you really want to vibe to something, great, really talented artist. Highly, highly recommend it. Go check him out. Okay, so we have this PDF here. If you guys go to Wholesaling with Mike University and scroll all the way to the bottom in your materials, you'll now find this new optimized uh, success planner. Okay, so the way that I plan these days is kind of a hybrid between a traditional planner as well as a journal. But I also leave myself like a lot of flexibility. And again, while I'm pretty good at planning, I don't do everything perfectly every day. So you guys can print this out and you can fill it out page by page if you want. Um, but my recommendation to you is to make this your own. A lot of times, you know, when you have kind of the prompts and the lines, it's like a little bit of obligation. And if you, if you mess it up, you know, you, you don't really want to follow through. 
I don't know, there's a lot of things where this kind of doesn't work. And so I showed you guys like this 100 day journal. I've had, uh, I've used a 10X planner, Grant Cardone's planner. That was decent. I've used a lot of different planners. Nowadays, this is what I use, man. Oh, snap. Hopefully you guys didn't lose my screen. I just hit my HDMI cable out. Hang on. Let me know if you guys can, uh, oh wait, it says screen sharing stopped. Give me one second. Let me pull that back up. knocked out my hdmi cable okay um nowadays what i use man i use a uh a, a regular ass spiral notebook you know, get them on amazon i got this one i think at walmart it's probably like three bucks okay and what that allows me is to have a little bit of flexibility in what i'm doing and what i'm writing let me not lock that knock that out again my <laughs> thing um so anyway let me walk you through kind of what this what this looks like and uh we're going to scroll to the top. And the first thing I start with, uh, I start with a monthly plan. So the beginning of the month, I want to set my big goal, right? And this is the thing that, what, what do you want to accomplish in like the next year? Why do you want to accomplish it? Let's talk about it, right? This should be more like a journal entry, but I encourage you guys to, well, listen, if you're in the mood to really write there, sometimes I can write this stuff for pages, but a lot of this stuff, keep it simple, keep it short. Because what happens is a lot of times you get enthusiastic, you'll do it well for like a couple of days. And then, you know, life starts to catch up with you and, you and you kind of start missing some stuff, right? So simplify this stuff. Um, you know, your big goal, maybe you want to buy a house, okay? That'd be something on there. And then remember, like when we do our why exercise, why? What, what kind of, what's that going to do for your life? What's it going to do for your kids? You want your kids to play in a big backyard? You want your kids to have a swimming pool in the backyard? Like think of things that, you know, it's not just my big goal is, hey, I want to make $100,000 this year. Not that that's a bad goal, but let's attach it to an emotion. Let's attach it to something meaningful meaningful okay and, and when i say meaningful i'm not saying you have to like feed the world although there's nothing wrong with that but um you know like i just mentioned you know maybe it's i want my kids to have a backyard they could play and have their friends over and i could monitor their friends because there's a lot of weird parents and weird friends out there and I, i'd prefer the kids to chill at my house so my kids grow up with like you know some decent uh i don't know values morals and values uh but let's just put that big goal and think of that as a good year-long goal now that's fantastic. You should always be writing those. But what happens is sometimes when your goals are a little bit far out, they're not front and center. So you can kind of forget about them. So next we're going to break that down. What do you want to accomplish for the month? Right. And this monthly goals, this is something where I encourage you to just kind of brainstorm. Okay. And then when you get to that, this weekly, now we want to go to some of our weekly goals and when we get to the weekly stuff. Um, there are a couple of lines here, but I encourage you guys to keep it simple. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of things that you want to accomplish every week, but try to make it, what's the one thing that's really going to move the needle? Okay. What is that one thing that's so important that is non-negotiable that no matter what, no matter if there's an emergency, no matter if you have to work late, no matter if the wife is complaining, you guys don't spend enough time together. What's the one thing you got to accomplish? And so, um, you know, you got three lines and put a couple things on there if it makes sense, but really there should be one big task that you want to accomplish each week that's going to move the needle forward. Okay, so that's going to be kind of the monthly plan. And I encourage you guys, uh, like I mentioned, I write this stuff in a notebook, a spiral notebook. Also, some of these journals that you buy online on Amazon, stuff like this, um, I like to go back through my journals. I've been journaling for years. Uh, when you're using these aggressively, this binding usually breaks down. And you're, it's just like a minor thing, but the pages fall out. And so I also like that because the spiral um, just keeps the uh, longevity there. Um, so I don't know. That's, that's kind of a good thing. Um, okay, so we got the monthly thing, right? And then, um, so, so here we've set what we want our goals to be for the week. And I encourage you when you're writing it in your spiral notebook, just keep that on one page. All right. And well, I'll get to the next point in a minute. And then each day I have a daily plan. Now, again, maybe a little bit borrowed from here, but I always start with something that I'm grateful for because the mo the positive momentum you get from just gratitude. This is just a law of the universe. I don't care if you believe in law of attraction or not, even though I know for a fact that this is a real concept. You just have to understand it. Uh, a lot of times when you watch YouTube videos and stuff, it's talked about in a very, very general way. But I promise you, your attitude, your optimism, this will all really significantly impact how you approach your day. And similar to when we talk about the morning uh, routine and your morning miracle, it's not that you have to do that, but it's really about, one, forming habits. And a lot of times your morning routine, as powerful as it is, is doing your 
affirmations, your visualizations, uh, you know, your exercise, your journaling to get you pumped up and in that state and in that mood to build that momentum. That also serves as a cue. Once you, you know, we talked about the habit loop um, last week or a couple weeks ago, and that serves as a cue when you're done with that to signal to yourself that, hey, man, I'm about to be productive, right? I'm about to get some shit done. Um, but I always, always start with gratitude. And guys, you always have something to be grateful for. Even if it's not specific, even if it's not a deal this week, start very, very general. Okay. And I can give you some resources on this. Uh, if you guys remember the last recommendations I made is, you know, keep, get all the negative stuff out of your head, whether it's music or whatever, or, you know, music talking about the everyday struggle. Uh, it's a lot of songs that I've liked in the past like that, but it doesn't do anything for you. All right, so you want to be um, is building up kind of that positivity and and approaching your day from a, a I don't know a frame of, of gratitude, okay, and appreciation. Um, then I have a theme. You'll notice it's it's pretty general. So what's my theme for the day? What am I trying to do? And a lot of times my theme comes from what I kind of messed up on yesterday. So it might be just focus. Maybe I got really distracted. Maybe I spent too much time I don't know doing something, and I got to like bring it in and really get focused. Okay. Maybe I didn't make enough phone calls or whatever. Then we have our daily goals. So the MIT, that's the most important task. That is non-negotiable. Whatever you need to get done. Okay. Uh, the most important thing that's number one, that's the most important. Even if you don't fill out goals, uh, daily goals, two and three, that's okay. But the most important task, and for most of you guys, that's going to be your prospecting. If you're doing cold calls for prospecting, you cannot survive in this business unless you've hit volume, right? So you want to make your daily goal your most important task. And then we want to keep ourselves accountable. So here is where, um, you know, you're going to put out tasks by time. You're going to lay them out. Hey, at six, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And sometimes you're going to be behind, but then you know, you're like, you plan this from the day before. Remember you... um. We always plan the next day from the day before. And um, you're going to say, man, it's it's 9.30. I'm supposed to be here. And then you can you know, try to catch up and really hold yourself accountable. And again, I encourage this. Don't go longer than the page. Just keep it on one page in that spiral notebook. So next, you're going to plan for your, um, uh, what do you call it, by the hours, right? So you'll plan your day out this way. And then um, you've got some notes, miscellaneous stuff. And what I do, and again, well, I like using my spiral notebook, man, I mark it up. I put notes, you cross things off, you make notes, you you can put an arrow and say, I didn't have enough time for this. This moves into tomorrow. And I also, the reason, you know, I have this PDF, you guys will be able to download it, but I also want to encourage you, do not type on this. Um, I usually say, hey, do what's comfortable for you guys. I know some people like their laptops, they're typing, but there's something about writing by hand. I don't have the scientific proof for this um, life experience, but also life experience that I've heard so many successful people and a lot of my partners, a lot of my friends, a lot of entrepreneurs, people in the business, they unanimously say the same thing. And I have found this to be true. So write this stuff out by hand every day, whether it's memory or you know recalling things or just keeping it front and center. Uh, you know, in your mind, in your space, it's just something about it, man. Writing it really makes a difference. So that's going to be the front side of your page. You're going to flip it over. And at the end of every day, this is very important. It does not take a lot of time, guys. Um, you have your daily review. So what you want to do is you put your pros, things you did well today. So number one that should be on there is your MIT, your most important task. Did you do that today? You need to write that on there. And then, you know, I could have put failures, right? but I do not. Areas of improvement, right? So where did you mess up? What did you miss? That's going to happen. And you need this self-reflection. And again, this is a, remember, a daily practice. So um, you have your areas of improvement. Hey, man, I didn't make enough calls today. Hey, man, I wasted a lot of time today. Hey, I uh, I didn't do X, Y, Z. I had all my task to do was to uh, set up my phone numbers and REI tight and I didn't do it well. Go a layer deeper. Why is that? I didn't feel like it. Why didn't you feel like it? I'm feeling a little depressed. Why are you feeling depressed? Keep going layers deeper and try to be your own kind of psychiatrist, right? And really try to get to the meat of why, hey, I'm not really tech savvy. Well, if those are the things, number one, then you can bring it to the forefront. But now you have a question to ask me because if I'm looking now, I'm pretty sure the chat box is still empty. So you need to kind of figure out um, what are those things that you messed up on and you are going to we're human beings that stuff happens okay 
And then what are those solutions? And again, I like to mark my pages up and draw arrows and this is why this is messed up and what have you, okay? And then I always do a rating system. So remember, um, this is a template for you guys. What I really want you to do is you don't have to do the lines and the boxes and all that stuff. I want you to make it your own. And this is important in the bottom part. I want you to quantify this. And sometimes you say, well, I don't know how to quantify. Figure it out, okay? Give yourself a rating out of five how you did. So usually I'm like, how is my happiness today? How's my mood? How's my general optimism? How am I feeling about life? That's what I do. Um, productivity, discipline, usually this is related to, you know, if you got five tasks, you completed them all, you get a five out of five. You completed four out of five, four out of five, you guys kind of get it, right? And then I always rank myself, did I go to the gym today? Um, and then how was my workout? If I had a good workout, five out of five. If I went, but I was sluggish, four out of five. If I didn't go, zero out of five, unless it was a uh, active rest day. And then I'll just write that in the comments. And then this is blank. You guys can use it for whatever you want. Uh, personally, I always have a tab for Jade, you know? So, you know, as a dad, it's like, hey man, did I spend time with my daughter today? Did we do something? Did we do an activity? Did we have a good conversation? Did we hang out? Did I talk to her? She's in high school now, right? So you gotta kind of be on top of these things and talk to her. And, you know, that's the most important thing in my life. So that's gonna be on there. Um, you know, if you don't have kids or if you have something else that's really important to you, if you're training for a competition, you know, back when I was competing, maybe instead of gym, I put MMA training or something like that. Um, so you guys, again, make it your own. Don't worry about making it neat and pretty and boxes and all that stuff, okay? That's just kind of a waste. And that's why this, this 100-day journal was a little too, I don't know, it was like formal for me, but I'd miss something and feel bad or you know, whatever it is, and I, I ultimately didn't complete it. And then, um, again, as a template, then we have a weekly review. And so what happens in the weekly review is you don't just want to write, you want to actually um, take, you know, remember this is probably a Saturday, so it's not, you should still be working weekends at this time, but uh, it's a little bit less, I guess, aggressive as a day for a lot of folks. And so go back through your, um, you know, the daily things that you're planning and look at it. What did you do? What ratings did you give yourself every day? Where did you kind of miss the mark? And you don't have to necessarily go by the prompts that I have here, although they're encouraged and really give yourself a fair assessment. Did I complete all my weekly goals? Yes or no goes in here or give yourself, you know, three out of five, uh, five out of five, and then write a couple of notes in there, you know, just write it in there where you messed up. And this art of writing, um, really really does kind of do something right it, 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 i don't know how to describe it but it, it, it brings it to the forefront puts it right in your face and if you do this once a month it's probably not going to work that well for you but if you do it every day i promise you this is a there's a lot of value that you're going to get from this so again we have our successes areas of improvement uh, a lot of times a lot of my weekly and monthly reviews <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I do go back. Remember, you go back through each day. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. And then you can also use that information to put into maybe the next day or your next monthly. Hey, I missed these things. I got to do this. Um, so make sure that you're actually doing this and giving yourself a fair assessment. And it gets a lot easier once you, uh, again, make this habitual. And I do have, remember, our, our tracking web, um, I'm sorry, our tracking spreadsheet in the program, but for a lot of you guys, you will find it easier, one, when you're actually writing these things, and also, you know, sometimes, you know, it's hard to maybe type everything out on a, a spreadsheet, but this will ultimately start to feel good, and even though I encourage you to use the prompts, you know, you can use this just like a journal. As I mentioned before, it's kind of a hybrid between a journal and a, um, and a planner. Okay, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna look at our areas of improvement. What are the lessons you learned? If you're just doing the same thing every week, you're not changing, okay? And and where you are now is probably not where you wanna be. So we do that. What are you gonna take into next week, okay? What are the overall takeaways that you have? And then, uh, again, here you can go a little bit deeper. So these are just, again, examples. They may not all be applicable to you, so make sure you go ahead and change this. What's your general mood for the week? How are you feeling? That's important. All right, were you optimistic? Are you feeling discouraged? Are you a little bit upset? Is something not working out? Write these things down. Your productivity, how disciplined are you? The gym, your diet, your love. Maybe that means, you know, uh, how's your love life, man? Is your partner happy? You know, are you single? Are you looking for it? That's an important thing. Social, do you have, you know, friends in your life? Have you been a hermit stuck in the house? Maybe you want to get out. You know, mood is, is everything. It will affect your business. Remember, 
the way that I teach, I never want to separate life and business. I, you know, your, your, your business and your life should complement each other. So these are things you want to be talking about your finances. You make some strong decisions and any of these things you want to expand on, you can do that in the journal entry as you talk about your day and your week. Um, and then you have your monthly review. So I always start my monthly review again, just for a reminder with that big goal, the 12 month goal. Maybe you want the house or the pool for your kids. Uh, how did you move closer to that one year goal? And some of the planners I've used in the past, man, they go really deep. There's like a hundred prompts to fill out and it looks good when you look at it. Hey, if you guys can do it, more props to you. If you know, if you want to write out all these different questions, but for me, I was just like, man, I'm spending 45 minutes trying to write this shit out and I could be actually doing things. Right? I could be making some calls or following up on something. This is just too much. And I would just quit it. But now, you know, even if you're not, again, filling out by prompts, just some some days the journal entries I write are like two pages. I encourage you to keep it to one, but sometimes I hit two pages and sometimes it's a sentence. So uh, just kind of kind of keep that in mind, right? Where'd you fall short, your areas of uh, um, improvement and, you know, primary things you need to do next month and then just a general journal entry. So again, you can use this and print it out and write it on a, on, on this actual paper. You could type it, but again, I highly discourage you, want to discourage you from doing that. But recommendation is to just do it in a notebook on a blank sheet of paper. Uh, so again, uh, getting personal with you guys, I, I, I um, took a screenshot of mine of a sample day. I just wanted to share kind of what that looks like, all right? So this is from my notebook, all right? So you'll see here, I got my three things. I usually write them right at the top, so I look at those first, and you'll notice Number three is blank. I didn't even have a third thing to do today. Oh my God. You know, right. It's not really a big deal. I had, I had some primary things. Uh, this was largely a prospecting day for me. So, uh, my most important task was prospecting as it should be for you guys. Okay. And then I wanted to brainstorm on what I was going to say in my next YouTube video that was on there. It's not, it's not an overly busy day. And you'll see some of my days, yo, keep it simple, bro. Some days and, and you know, I have got my, what I'm grateful for here. I've got my kind of theme for the day. And some, and I've got the times, like I talked about, guys, there are some days where this paper will just be four things and there'll be no times on it. You know, I mess, I'm a human being too, right? It'll just be four things, no theme, no grateful for it, whatever, right? This is not ideal days, but they happen. That's why I like the flexibility. Sometimes my stuff is this big. Sometimes it's three pages long, right? And, and I talk about different things to myself. So I started my gratitude, you know, Jay, my family, my girl, my uh, newfound, uh, uh, man, I can't even read my own handwriting, uh, renewed passion for Christ. This is right before Jade's baptism. So Jade's enthusiasm, she's getting really, uh, excited about God and, and being in church. And I remember when she was a little younger being in church, she's falling asleep, she's picking at her nails. And now she's like really, um, uh, uh getting enthusiastic. And it's like, it's a great thing for me. And as dad, um, what else? PSI, I got a contract signed in Port St. Lucie. So I was really excited about that. It's another deal that'll be closing soon. My coaches, students, you guys, I'm grateful for you guys, uh, for my health, right? You're, sometimes these are the things we talk about. We, you take them for granted, man. Like the, the guy who has the billions of dollars, who's come down with, you know, unfortunately like cancer and is sitting in the hospital dying, man, he would give up all those for, uh, you know, for the health that some of you guys have, if you have no money. So be grateful for these things. I promise you more of it will come to you. Um, and I, I've been consistent at gym. There's times, you know, I've been on and off, on and off. So I was really consistent this week. So that was good. Um, theme, sometimes my theme is four lines long this day. Uh, focus for today is just primarily prospect. And that's what I was doing. So I get up at 5.30 in the morning. I do my morning routine. At 6.30, I drop Jade off at school. All right. Uh, seven o'clock, I check my email. Remember, you don't want to be, every time an email comes in, don't keep it open all day, okay? It's not productive. So I check my email first thing in the morning. I respond to any emails. If I have, uh, sometimes that follow-up crosses over to that. Uh, if you guys email me, stuff like that. I review my inboxes. So for you guys, it's going to be like your Zillow inboxes. I have a Zillow inbox with automated search results coming in. See if there's anything I want to make an offer on. So primarily my MLS properties. I also look at, I have all wholesalers, um, their cash buyer, their e blast in an in inbox. So I look at those. That's how I do a lot of my joint venture deals. Uh, remember, I'm at a point now where I have a huge buyers list. A lot of times, I just I just scan through that and I'll see things. I'm like, I know who I could sell that to. Hey man, you want a JV? And I just forward an email, you know, send a text message, and I do a lot of deals that way. Um, you guys can get to that point. A lot of you, if you're new, you're not there yet, but that's okay. Um, another thing I do, like a lot of times, you're just trying to. Uh, plan out what am I doing, 
right? Five and six and seven. It's not always clear. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just draw a line down the side. And again, that's why I like having this blank paper. And I'll just brainstorm in here. Okay. And I'll just brainstorm a couple of things. I think this was a Thursday. So like group coaching call tomorrow. So that was like making sure that I'm ready to talk to you guys. And then I'll just put um, numbers next to these things in terms of priority or, you know, a little asterisk or whatever. And then from there, when I decide what my priorities are, then I will, you know, look at them. So, okay, this is most important, most important. And this is the order I'm going to do them in. I use a, a Pomodoro timer a lot of times too. So this is one, two, three. And then from there, I will move them into the time section. Okay. And sometimes not everything on the list makes it in there, but that that's okay. All right. So, uh, we're at seven o'clock. So I'm reviewing my inboxes by eight o'clock. I'm responding to emails. I'm sending out um, you know, emails, getting back to people following up and I'm sending my, uh, my inquiries on new MLS leads. Cause remember I'm reviewing these inboxes here. So if I see anything that matches, I'm running those, uh, um, you know, looking at those and then I'll send off all my emails and I'm using again, my REI Titan automations to do that. Um, nine o'clock, I got a call with my VA. So we go over what he's been doing through the week and then uh, this day we kind of plan some stuff for the next week and looking over numbers and that's a little bit of a coaching call and you know I have it scheduled for 15 minutes this call went for like uh, probably almost an hour so not everything's perfect right uh, 11 o'clock I had a call with a um, a student so that's that and then 12 to 3 locked in prospecting so for you guys when you are doing your prospecting remember I've got VAs and they do calls but I'm at, at this point I still do calls myself I actually really really enjoy it um, I feel like I'm always trying to level up my game so to speak, but also my conversion rates, uh, on, on making calls is far higher than any VA I have or have ever had. Um, so that's all my prospecting, right? I keep that front and center. You can see it's, um, and some days it's earlier, but, uh, this is a sample day. And, you know, for you guys, again, just, you got to get these numbers up. Okay. That's a, a really big thing. I don't know if it fits into what I'm saying now. I think I meant to mention that earlier, but, um, you know, I, I get emails and calls and they're like, my Mike, this, I didn't talk to anyone who's coaching this cold call and shit doesn't work. And I'm like, how many people did you call? And like, man, I made 30 calls today. And I'm like, good. We'll just make another like 970. And if I tell you guys, Hey man, make a thousand calls. And again, if you're intimidated, well, it's like, listen, if you want to do a deal within 30 days, right? Take that 1000 divided by 30. It's, it's really not that much. Like you can absolutely do this in like two hours a day. If you, as long as you're being consistent, again, if you're using the dialer system, uh, inside of RI Titan, not only does that have, uh, well, the automated dialing, but it also has the follow-up system. So nothing falls through the cracks. Cause remember, um, in addition to voicemail drops and SMS and email and stuff like that. But, um, you know, you know, most of the deals are not going to come from the first time. Okay. So I do that till three, uh, three to four 30. I, uh, go to the gym with Jade. Right. So that's what we're doing now these days, uh, dad, daughter workouts. And I'm loving that because I can, uh, chunk my time. Right. It's so like, I get my workout in, but I also get to spend quality time with my daughter. And then we also, we tend to have like really good conversations. She's really open at the gym. So I'm, I'm kind of killing two birds at one stone. I really enjoy that. And listen, I don't put Jade on like a workout machine. She's doing squats and deadlifts and uh, bench press, stuff like that. Not related to our call, but uh, whatever. Uh, 4.30, I, I have breakfast. Sometimes I have breakfast at 2. Uh, I do intermittent fasting. Personally, I find that if I eat breakfast, I, I do get a little bit sluggish. Um... So I like to, uh, intermittent fast. I do my workouts. I do my, uh, my morning work, which is usually the most important task that I have. I do that on an empty stomach kind of fasted. Then I eat breakfast usually around four 30, uh, come back, do another email check. Um, then a lot of times I'll have to respond to emails. And then again, back to some prospecting, some calls, you'll see it's a split schedule because listen, I understand some people are working. So you call them at 12 to three, some people you get through to. Um, some people don't pick up their phone till after work. So I also like to hit that block, that five to seven block. That's when I'll do calls. I'll do follow up. And again, that's all organized in my system. So it's so important to have that CRM and to be using, uh, the CRM that you guys have in REI Titan. And then coming down to seven o'clock, I, um, did an outline for a new YouTube video that I wanted to release, just kind of brainstorming some ideas and then just do kind of bullet points of like some of the key points that I like to hit in my video. And that's it. And you can see, I don't know, there's a couple other things on here. Respond to Robert as a, a guy I made an offer with. Maybe make a social media post. I got to drink more water. 
uh, Kevin, that's my VA. So that one made it on there. Our group coaching call, email, send out, uh, check DMs, something I haven't done in a while. Um, so not everything necessarily makes it on there, but you know, you kind of brainstorm and then prioritize. So that's the front side. You can see it's very simple, man. I'm not necessarily putting, and I'm sure I did extra tasks through this day, but also, you know, this gives me kind of a formula, right? How I'm organizing my day. And then flip it over the next side of the paper. Okay. How, daily review. Okay. I had a relatively productive day. I cut my morning routine short. Yeah. I didn't do my journal entry for today. That, listen guys, that happens. If you're trying to hold yourself to this standard of perfection, it's not, it, it, it's for the most part impossible, but it, it's not that you don't want to strive to be better, but if you hold it too, I don't know, uh, tightly to that, then when you don't do it, what happens is you get, um, discouraged and then you're like kind of all or nothing. And a lot of times you don't do it. So give yourself that leeway, give yourself that space to, and, and again, sometimes my daily reviews are two pages. Sometimes it's two sentences. All right. So, uh, some pros, 112 calls. I had two with interest, uh, call David at noon tomorrow. It is in my follow-up system, but I like to write things down a uh, little asterisk there. I had a good call with Kevin. I updated on his task, his deliverables for the next week. So he knows exactly what he's doing. We did a little bit of coaching. Um, listen to some calls, great gym session with Jade, uh, four decent offers that I put out there. And then remember I'm kind of summarizing my day. So when I say four decent offers, that's still in my CRM. And with each of those offers, there's a lot of notes as to what's going on. So if someone calls me back or it pops back up, you know, whether it's the next day or it's six months from now, I know what I was talking about, what they were talking about, where we were, what the situation is. Okay, AOI, air of improvement. Let's see, wait, okay, a little personal, but way too much time on social media, right? I end up scrolling Facebook for a long time. I got lost in a web, you know, you go down that rabbit hole of YouTube videos and it says here, 45, 20, I lost like an hour, all right? And I consider myself a pretty productive person and that's unacceptable to lose an hour almost of time just scrolling social media. But listen, man, it happens to all of us, right? But if you just let it slide, you know, you got to hold yourself accountable and call yourself out. Uh, what else I got on here? Okay, so solution, right? Like I said, I remember I, I like to uh, put arrows and mark things up. And, you know, this was a relatively simple day, not too much going on. But you, you'll see some of my other entries, you know, whether you want to highlight or circle or X's, whatever your thing is, right? Make it your own. Um, so my solution, Hey, no phone on the desk during work hours. It's not necessary. I don't need my phone in the day. When I make calls, I do all my calls through REI Titan. It's on my computer, my Google voice number, which people hit me up on, uh, for business purposes is on my computer. It's open. I do my texting and stuff from there. So my phone is my personal, personal number and it has no business on my desk. So my solution, man, just get that shit out of there. Remember when I talk about cultivating your environment. Right, making sure that you you put things in place beforehand. You anticipate any issues, any problems, any threat to your productivity beforehand. All right, and then get rid of it. So now, when I review this, I know tomorrow I'm not doing work with with my phone on my desk. You know, most of the time my phone stays on Do Not Disturb. Um, let's see what else I got in here. Let's, and it doesn't always have to be in order. I was a little bit tired this morning. That's probably why I. Uh, you know, maybe didn't finish my journal entry or whatever. I went to bed late last night. Okay. So tonight, 10 PM, non-negotiable. It's my bedtime. No matter what, I got to be in bed at that time. Happiness mood, five out of five. My gym, five out of five. I uh, had a good squat day. Uh, I got to drink more water. I was a little short on protein. So my diet, I gave myself four out of five. Um, what did I say? Late night. Oh, I think I wanted to drink a protein shake late at night. Uh, with Jade, hey, we had a great gym session. I helped her with her homework. We had a great dinner, good conversation, productivity, 3.5 out of 5. And that's what this looks like, okay? So you guys, I really encourage you to use this. Use, uh, again, the, the spreadsheet that I prepared for you guys. You can just, you know, print it and write on it. But in my personal experience, some of the prompts are made to you. Well, just prompt you, right? But if you like, I have to fill this out. I have to fill this out. It can get either discouraging or maybe you don't have time and you know you miss a day and then you don't want to do it again. So that's why I like my plain notebook. Some days it's more detailed than others. Some days I got a lot of tasks going on. And that's why, you know, even if you have 20 tasks, focus on the top three, keeps your focus there. 
And sometimes I do one thing all day. I'll just do days where I just, just make cold calls, okay? And they're going to be days where you miss it. You don't do any calls. You don't do any offers. It happens. But also, uh, one, if you did this tomorrow, I promise you, you'll have a more productive day tomorrow. But if you make this a habit and build up, build this up and build into it, um, you will also kind of... Um, Give yourself something to reflect on, give yourself a data set, and you'll be able to look back objectively and kind of pinpoint where you're slipping, right? Where you're not following through and what your issues are. And then that will help you bring it to the forefront and really address those things. And then it will give you guys some questions to bring to these calls. Remember, it doesn't just have to be technical things. Hey, Mike, how do I fill out a contract? Mike, man, I'm really struggling waking up in the morning. Mike, I'm really struggling with my discipline, man. I pick up the phone, I make one call, then I go get a snack and I go to the bathroom and then an hour goes by and I don't know why the hell I can't just focus. Yo, I have some, you know, whether you call it biohacking or whatever, I've been through, I promise you, all of these things. I've had students who have been through all these things and I can help you with problems that you don't even know that you have yet, but you have to communicate with me. Okay, so we're gonna end that. Remember, if you guys want a copy of this, it's gonna be in your uh, wholesale with Mike University. Scroll to the bottom, look under your materials. Uh, this is the optimized productivity planner uh, worksheet. Um, you know, I, I encourage you guys to just just start it. Just start it tomorrow. Start using it tomorrow. All right. Now, on that note, I'm gonna jump into the chat and see if you guys have questions. Now is our time. Let's do some open Q and A. Uh, remember the quality of your questions. Not to mean that. I'm judging the quality, ask anything, but the more you ask questions, the better you will get, the faster you will get. And if you don't have questions, just share your experience with me. Let me know what you're, what you're doing, what's been going on. Um, and I can kind of help guide you through that. In a lot of cases, I can kind of see problems coming that you maybe don't or tell you things that you maybe should anticipate. Uh, all right, so let me go ahead and check the chat. 